Playoff hopes for our Raiders are looking dismal. UNLV football finishes 0-6 in Coach Royal's inaugural season, although has a huge signing day. COVID, unfortunately, has overtaken uh, UNLV's men's basketball program. And one of our Golden Knights gets married to a bachelorette. Yeah, that's true. Plus, no episode next week because of Christmas. Fa la 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 la. It's episode 21 of Heat and Low. So, unfortunately, let's talk about our Las Vegas Raiders first. Uh, started the season 6-3, and three, a lot of promise going into it, are currently 7-7, seven and seven, had two games within the last week. Um, first, they played the Colts on Sunday, and then last night, they played the Chargers, and two tough losses, two losses really that they couldn't afford. Um, you know, we'll start off with the Colts, Derek Carr, 316 yards, two passing touchdowns, one rushing touchdown, but he did have... Two interceptions, um, you know, no touchdowns from Josh Jacobs, Nelson Aguilar, and Foster M- Moreau. Not not a not a name you hear a lot from the receiving core. Uh, did have the two touchdowns from Derek Carr. Um, in terms of defense, uh, Philip Rivers really was hardly pressured, um, and he got his 19th win against the Raiders, most um, against any team in his career. Even though you know he's not in a Chargers <laughs> uniform, he. Still kind of owns the Raiders, and I mean, if we want to talk about how how terrible the defense was, uh, running back Jonathan Taylor, rookie from Wisconsin, had two touchdowns but 150 rush yards. Um, that is uncalled for, and the Raiders thought so too because they fired their defensive coordinator Paul Gunther, who has been with the team since 2018. Um, and and I do think it it made sense. I think. It was, it was about time because the defense has really been struggling uh, a lot this year. You know, the offense, for the most part, has had to carry the Raiders. And, again, you, you, you need to have a defense to, to back that up. Um, I mean, you know, look at Kansas City. They don't have the, the best defense, but their defense can, can get it done whenever they need to. They'll give up the big chunk plays, but when it comes down to the red zone and all that, they will hold their opponents, and then, of course, you got the explosive offense. And I think for the offensive side, Raiders have that defensively hasn't been that good. So Paul Gunther is now gone. Rod Marinelli, who uh, formerly was with the Cowboys, is the interim (laughs) defensive coordinator. And actually, a lot of fans on Twitter of the Raiders were clamoring to hire Wade Phillips, who also was in Dallas. He was the head coach. Uh, he also spent some time with the Texans. He's been, you know, around the league coaching for almost 40 years. And so a lot of fans on Twitter were kind of hoping, reaching out to him, saying like, hey, you know, trying trying to recruit Wade Phillips as a defensive coordinator. Um, and and maybe, maybe that would work out. But I just think, yes, uh, the Raiders need to find someone that fits that scheme. Um, I think... We'll see the future of, of John Gruden. Again, I think there was a lot of promise going into the season. Started out great, but, you know, they lost their last four or five games. And so, things kind of rocky right now. Uh, playoff hopes really dismal. Let's talk about their game last night against the Chargers. Unfortunately, Derek Carr uh, suffered a groin injury. He was uh, running for a potential touchdown, uh, pulled up, and, and, you know, started hobbling. And you could tell something was wrong. Um, It turned out to be a significant groin injury. That's what, according to John Gruden, that's what he's saying. Um, So obviously, you know, prayers up to Derek Carr. Um, I hate hate to see that for any player. So hopefully he, you know, can can heal. Um, But the backup, Marcus Mariota, who was with the Tennessee Titans, that's who he was originally drafted to, he came, he had a huge day, um, 17 of 28, 226 yards, he had one touchdown and one interception that came in overtime. They were driving, potentially, I think, obviously could have won the game on the opening drive uh, through a crucial interception, and that basically cost them the game, um, unfortunately. But other than that, he had a great game, and it was the battle of the Oregon Ducks because he played at Oregon, Justin Herbert played at Oregon, so it was kind of cool to see two former Oregon Ducks going at it. Um but again, this uh, this this hurt 
Um, you know, there was a sack on, on Herbert from Kendall Vickers. Um, and, and like I said, you know, Mariota, he, he, he kind of let them back. Um, you know, they, they were, they were losing and then it was, it was kind of a back and forth game. Um, and then obviously, you know, when, when to overtime and Justin Herbert got, got the game winning, uh, touchdown kind of, you know, crossed the ball over the plains and, and, and did it. So I think, you know, and he's had an incredible, uh, rookie rookie career and so you know hats off to Justin Herbert he is going to be something special but I want to look at the playoff picture as of right now you have uh, um, the two wild card spots the sixth and seventh seed with the sixth seed held by the Colts who obviously beat the Raiders the Raiders kind of control their own destiny and they're not doing a great job Um, below that you have the Dolphins in the seventh place the final wild card spot and uh, in eighth you even have the Ravens, who are also eight and five, and now you have the Raiders that are seven and seven. So I want to look with you at the remaining schedules of all these teams, um, so we can kind of you know dissect. Okay, this is what's up for grabs. So obviously Raiders need to win out. Uh, their next two games are versus the Dolphins, which is crucial because obviously the Dolphins hold that seventh and final position, and then they play at the Broncos. They should be able to win. Both of those games, again, they should have beat the Chargers, but, you know, uh, that didn't happen. Like, you know, the Colts, yes, the Colts are great. So, they need to just finish up in 9-7 and seven and then hope for some miraculous help. So, for the Colts, they're versus the Texans, then they're at the Steelers, then they're versus the Jags. I mean, honestly, the way the Colts are playing, the the only game I could see them potentially losing is at the Steelers, even though the Steelers have been struggling lately, but we'll see what happens. Uh, For the Dolphins, they probably have the toughest schedule. Um, Their next game is against the Patriots, and then at the Raiders here at Allegiant Stadium, and then they're at the Buffalo Bills. So they have two of the last three games are within their division. Um, They did beat the Patriots once this year, with Cam Newton, but I'm sure Cam is looking to get back at them, kind of spoil their playoff hope, hopes. And then again, the Raiders need to take care of business against them. And the Bills, the Bills are ascending. They're first in the AFC East, um, but who knows? Maybe if they lock up, you know, the, I believe, yeah, the division is theirs. So basically, um, you know, well, I, I guess given the circumstances, well, I guess the Dolphins are still theoretically in it. Um, so for the Bills, it will depend. Will they rest starters? I think it depends how how where they're at in that uh, in that time. So, but the Dolphins probably have the toughest schedule from here on out. And then the Ravens are versus the Jaguars, versus the Giants, and then at the Bengals. So for the for the Ravens, they probably have the best shot to make the playoffs. Again, the Raiders didn't do themselves any favors, um, you know, because again, they they needed they needed to beat the Colts, um, and, and I get that was a tough game, but you definitely needed to beat the Chargers, and now you just have to win out and hope for some help. So, we'll see. I mean, if they don't make the playoffs, it's going to be disappointing, in, in my opinion, just because they started off so good. There was a lot of promise on paper. There was a lot of promise, but we'll have to wait and see how the season finishes, and then after that, off-season moves. What happens to Derek Carr? What happens to John Gruden? Something is going to happen if this team does not make the playoffs, in my opinion. So we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but, I, I mean, Raiders, from here on out, you just have to win your remaining games and, and hope for the best. All right, so you might be looking at UNLV football like, oh, Coach Royal, he came over from Oregon, he's supposed to have this great season, and he didn't win a single game. Yes, disappointing. They finished 0-6. They did have two cancellations. Um, because of COVID against Colorado State and Boise State, and they unfortunately joined the 1998 Rebels as the only only winless teams in program history. Um, You know, so again, even Tony Sanchez didn't have, um, at least he won one game. But there's a lot of promise, I feel, with Coach Arroyo, and I think you're going to see that with some of the things um, I'm going to talk about. First of all, I, I don't have to vouch. Running back Charles Williams has actually come out and said, give us a full season, give us a full schedule, and I feel like this program is going to really start jumping. I see a really bright future. Coach Arroyo 
knows what he is doing. So again, uh, uh, Williams has confidence in Arroyo. Um, and so again, I do think we are going to start to see the tables turn. Um, and happier news, you know, wide receiver Kyle Williams was named Mountain West Freshman of the Year. He finished the season with 35 catches for 426 yards. So I just wanted to take a second and acknowledge um, Kyle Williams for that. Congratulations. And so let's talk about signing day. Signing day was earlier this week. And UNLV signed 19 players, including wide receiver Aaron Holiday, who is out of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, went to Legacy High School. So, you know, hometown kid staying here. That's always great news. And they def- uh, they signed defensive line Nick Demetrius from Watts, California. He's actually the highest ranked recruit in the 2021 draft. So again, Coach Arroyo knows what he's doing. Um, that's that's a pretty big, substantial thing. And actually, Coach Arroyo has brought in the second highest ranked class in UNLV history, only trailing the 2003 Rebels. So again, you look at the season. 0-6, a lot of different factors. He's coming into a new program, um, coming from a very successful program out of Oregon. Um, you know, it's just like Coach Coach TJ in, in, in basketball. You're kind of given the first year what you're dealt with, um, and you got to work with that. And I think, again, you're already seeing he brought in the second highest recruiting class in his second year. That obviously should tell you something, um, should hopefully give you some confidence. It gives me confidence. And again, I agree with Williams. It can only go up from here. I mean, you know, you, you, you finish 0-6 in your first year, you can only transcend or ascend uh, up. So I, I like that a lot. I have a lot of confidence in Coach Royal. Again, I think it's similar to TJ Otzenberger where first year was kind of iffy you didn't you know you didn't know you you thought there was promise but you weren't sure and i think you're starting to see the bears of the fruit at least uh, on paper playoff we'll have to see how it happens uh you know in, in in games but i'm i'm happy with that so rebels can't wait for next season so 2020 hasn't been the best of years and for UNLV basketball, it's hit them hard. Um, their season has kind of, they haven't played since December 5th when they defeated Kansas State for their first win. Both their games against Eastern Washington and Pepperdine were canceled. And, uh, you know, now their whole program is put on halt, put on pause because TJ Ozenberger, the head coach, has tested positive. So, you know, well wishes, prayers, uh, condolences out to him and his family and everybody else that was affected. Um, it's really kind of overtaken their season. They were supposed to begin conference play on Sunday against Wyoming. Um, but obviously, you know, basketball has become a secondhand thing now. Uh, you know, the health, well being is obviously the priority. And so just want to take a second and acknowledge that. I will keep you updated with everything, um, you know, surrounding TJ and uh, the running Rebels. But I want to end this episode on a happier note with our Golden Knights. Want to congratulate William Carlson. Um, He's been with the team since its inaugural season in 2017. He got engaged on Monday uh, to actually a Bachelor star. Yes, Emily Ferguson. I don't know who she is, uh, but they've been dating since November of 2017. Uh, So congratulations. I got to find myself maybe a Bachelor star. or would it be Bachelorette? Because it's a, you know, either way, I don't know. Ladies, if you're out there, call me, hit me up. Um, no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Um, but yes, no episode next week because of Christmas. So I hope you have a wonderful, a very merry Christmas. And I will actually, the next time I'll see you is in 2021, where hopefully things start to, you know, improve. So Take care of yourselves. Have a have a lovely Christmas, lovely holiday, um, however you celebrate it, and I'll see you in a few weeks.